go ahead and deploy a Zscaler Internet Access Private Service Edge. We come into the ZIA administration interface and we click um, administration and we'll go to virtual Zens and we'll add a virtual Zen. And we're going to call this one ZIA PSE1. Uh, the size, we're going to use a small type for this demonstration. Um, and we need to complete the proxy IP address, subnet mask, gateway, and the load balancer IP address. So I find it's easier to keep a table here. So the proxy IP address is 193. The subnet mask is uh, slash 24. Um, the gateway is dot 254. And the load balancer address is 195. So we click save on that. We'll go ahead and add the second virtual node um, and we'll call this one CIA PSE2. Again, small type. Proxy IP address for number two is 194, 192.168.1.194. Again, 255.255.255.0, subnet mask. And the gateway is .254. And the load balancer IP address is 196. Click save. we can go ahead and activate those changes. And what we do is we download these certificates which will be used in the enrollment phase um, for these uh, private service edges to join the Zero Trust Exchange. So we also come into vZen cluster because we're going to cluster these vZens together um, and we'll call this ZIA PSE and we select those nodes PSE1 and PSE2 um, and you can see it's automatically pulled in the subnet mask and the gateway from their configurations. And all we need is the virtual IP address, which is .190, and we click Save. Okay, so this is all activated in the administration interface, and we're ready to deploy the private service edges. So we come across to my ESX server, we'll register a VM, from an OVA file, and we'll call this ZIA PSE1, and we'll upload the file, the VZen OVA file here. Click Next, Data Store 1, Next, Next, Finish, and let that deploy. And we'll do the same for ZIA PSE2. We'll drag and drop that OVA file click next and it's deploying and we can see these uh, files are uploading they're importing into my ESX server So we can see the PSEs are starting up now. We'll open up the console for each of these. And we'll log in here, ZS root, ZS root. And we need to do sudo vzen configure network figure network and we'll change the name server to 192.168.1.2 it's my local DNS server could use Google if you want um, and we'll select just one and the management interface is 
192.168.1.191 slash 24 and the default router 192.168.1.254 and this is ZIA PSE 1 and we'll do the same on the second one uh, sudo vzen configure network again 192.168.1.2 for the name server 192.168.1.192 slash 24 for the management and 192.168.1.254 um, is the gateway and this is ZIA PSE 2 Okay, so uh, these nodes are up and running. Um, and so I can now come across to my uh, terminal window. Can come across to my terminal window and we can SSH ZS root at 192.168.1.191. So we can come across to uh, our terminal window, SSH ZS root at 192.168.1.191. And we'll open up a second window, SSH ZS root at 192.168.1.192. .1 and we're ready to go. Um, and what we need to do is uh, CD into my downloads folder and I will secure copy the VZEN certificate for PSE1 to ZS root at 192.168.1.191 colon slash TMP. So we'll upload that, um, that file there and we'll do the same for 192 and we'll upload PSE certificate number two. So both of the um, private service edges now have their certificates uploaded to them. So I can go ahead here and do sudo vzen install cert from slash tmp vzen pse1.cert. And we could do the same on this one, sudo vzen install cert. And the certificates are used to authenticate the node to the cloud. And the cloud will then um, allow that private service edge to join, we'll encrypt everything, and then we'll start and uh, join the cloud properly by downloading the build. So we can now do sudo vzen download build sudo vzen download build on this one and we'll leave these for a short while to go ahead and uh, download their builds they'll join the cloud and then we'll be able to uh, start using them so we'll pause here whilst we let that uh, build download and we'll come back to this uh, shortly. The private service edges have downloaded um, their builds, they've upgraded, they've brought down all of their um, configurations and they're joined to the Zero Trust Exchange. So we can SSH onto the nodes and we can do sudo vzen uh, status And we can see that the SME, which is the proxy process, is running. 
the CDSC process, which is uh, for downloading configurations and uh, software updates um, is uh, running and the load balancer is also running. And we do the same on the second node. And we can see that all those processes are running there. So at this point, we should be able to ping each of those instances. So 192.168.1.191 is the uh, management for SME1. 192 is the management for the private service edge 2. 193 is the proxy for 1. 194 is the proxy for 2. 195 is the load balancer instance on the private service edge 1. And 196 is the um, load balancer on private service edge 2. And so the virtual IP address dot 190 is available and that is essentially one of the load balancers um, that then forwards, forwards the traffic on based on a user IP hash to one of those two service instances. And of course we could take one down or bring uh, and, and traffic would fail over to the other and, and do all of our um, disaster recovery testing. If we take a look at the um, ARP table, we can see all of those uh, ARP entries there, um, each of those being for the um, proxy IP, uh, management IP, proxy IP, load balancer IP, and then a floating MAC address. Um, for the virtual IP. So we could go ahead and generate traffic through the proxies. So curl uh, HTTP dub 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 uh, we'll go 888.com um, um, minus, uh, minus L uh, for follow links minus X 192.168.1.193 port 80 is the first proxy. And we see we got content back 194 is the second proxy and then um, 190 is the virtual IP address that will be load balanced across those two nodes. And so if we come into the administration interface and we look at analytics and web insights, we can go logs, we'll say the last uh, five minutes and we'll apply filters. And we'll see You'll see the traffic there um, passing through 150, uh, 51 is my IP address passing through the, the node to 888.com. We're also seeing some um, health check traffic being uh, passed through the nodes as well. Um, Okay, so now we need to think about passing traffic with Client Connector. So if we come to um, Administration and we'll go to Hosted Pack Files, um, we've got a PSE pack file here. And so this configuration does one or two things. It either returns the source IP variable and we can match that to my external IP address, or we can say, does adfs.welshgeek.net resolve to something within this subnet, in which case return that virtual IP address. Otherwise, I must be off the network and return the gateway or secondary gateway IP addresses. Um, let's just first off check my um, public IP address. 8178.78.1.1. Seventy-eight, seventy-four, seventeen. So it should match on this one, and then I should be pointed to this private service edge. So we come across to policy, client connector portal. We go to our app profiles, Mac OS, and we'll edit this one. Um, and you see here it's already pointed at the app.pack. So we'll update this to say pse.pack, which is the private service edge and we'll click save and we can go ahead and launch the Zscaler client
that's going to go through an enrollment process and uh, prompt for multi-factor authentication. I'm going to prove that on my device. And I'll go ahead and register the device and enroll and join the cloud. So we click open here. We can see that private access is connected to my private service edge and int internet access is connected to that virtual IP address 192.168.1.190 and all of the traffic is flowing through with the DTLS tunnel. So if I go ahead now and I go to that 888.com website I should get blocked because it's gambling based on the tunnel from the client machine um, or I could go to um, ip.zscaler.com and we'll see that the traffic is flowing through with my source IP address um, but obviously it doesn't apply or show that we're going through the Zscaler service because we're coming through a private service edge and it's not able to detect that through the, uh, through the internet. If we uh, come across back to um, the administration interface, We'll come across to analytics and web insights and we'll look at the logs for the last five minutes again. We can see the traffic coming through. And we should be able to see the request. Let's uh, add a filter. Uh, for URL search and the URL host contains Zscaler. Oh, we see a request for a help page. We see the client external IP address being my public IP address and we can see that it, uh, we add in that we came through Zscaler Client Connector from the Mac. And there's our request for ip.zscaler.com and uh, the client type information in, in that one. Okay, so now we've shown that uh, we can forward traffic from the client device um, through a private service edge for Zscaler internet access as well as Zscaler private access and we're able to use digital experience to monitor all of that traffic flow through the platform.